Hello and good afternoon everybody. It's Tracy Di Bartolo, Thermomix Consultant here. I just wanted to pop on quickly and show you how to do the vegetable stock paste. So for those of you who are maybe new to Thermomix and haven't had the chance to do your stock paste yet, I thought it would be a good idea if I could just do a quick video and you can come back and look at it anytime you want. So I can't highly recommend enough for you to make your own stock paste. There's three different stock pastes that you can make. First one is the vegetable stock paste. You can also make a chicken variety and you can make a meat variety. So I have all three sitting in my fridge because I do quite a lot of cooking and I find that the chicken and the meat are really good in the appropriate recipes. However, if you just want to start with making the vegetable stock paste to begin with, you can always use that in any recipe, regardless of what it asks for. So if you just look on Cookie Do vegetable stock paste, well, you could probably just Google it. I'm pretty sure you will find the recipe there. Um, I brought it up onto my screen and I'm going to start cooking. So it's a very, this recipe is really forgiving. It's a really good one that to use up any old uh, vegetables that are starting to look a little bit worse for the wear and you don't particularly want to add them to your cooking as such. You can set them aside into a bag, a Ziploc bag or something, pop them in the freezer and then just use them in your stock paste because they're going to get munched down and cooked thoroughly anyway, which I'll show you what that looks like. So with, if we're going to follow the exact recipe, it firstly asks you for 200 grams of celery. Well, I'm starting off um, without celery because I just don't have any. But I do have a lot of the um, broccoli stalks. So I'm not a big one for eating the stalks of the broccoli, but they're fantastic in the, the stock paste. So I'm just going to pop in all of those stalks cut up and they're just cut up into about ice cube size. So the important thing with this recipe is just to have some consistency with the size of your veggies that you put in. There's a bit more than 200 but again it doesn't really matter. Uh, the next thing I ask for is a couple of carrots. I do not bother to peel my carrots, I just make sure that they're Got, um, they're washed and I take the top and the tail off of them and again cut them into about ice block size now I'm only putting in one because it was quite a large carrot so two small ones um, or just one of the large carrots there's no weighing anymore it's only the first thing that we weighed in and everything else is just whatever so next one says a brown onion I actually had about three quarters of an onion left over from something I was doing, so I'm just popping that in. Um, it asks for a tomato. Guess what? I don't have any tomato, so there you are. We're just going to skip that, or you could, if you had something else, maybe some mushrooms that you wanted to use up, you could put mushrooms in instead. It really doesn't matter. Okay, zucchini, again, just cut into pieces like that, so in goes the zucchini. Now, garlic cloves, I've only got one, but one or two, doesn't matter. A bay leaf, so a dried bay leaf is something that you'll find you'll use quite a bit, especially if you're making tomato pasta sauce, you always gotta put your bay leaf in, in it goes. Now, we're up to the herbs. Herbs can be completely flexible. If you've got fresh herbs, then pop them in, you can put in anything like parsley or sage, uh, rosemary or basil. It's winter here at the moment, so I don't have a lot of herbs growing, but I've always got plenty of parsley. So I'm just going to put in a whole lot of parsley. Before I do that, I'm going to show you how full my bowl is. So the important thing with this recipe, as flexible as it is, is to always ensure that you don't go past the 2.2 litre in the TM6 and TM5 or the 2 litre mark in a TM31, um, don't go past the maximum in your bowl. That's really the, the rule that you still must adhere to. Alright, so I'm going to pop in just this big handful of parsley because that's all I've got. 
The other recommendation I have for you is when you go shopping, so I shop at Coles just because that's what's local, they have these fresh herbs in these little plastic containers and often they have them going out really cheap because they need to be used. So this is just happens to be oregano. Um, I just buy them and immediately put them in the freezer knowing that I'm going to be putting them into my vegetable stock paste because it doesn't matter. See how they've gone all a bit, you know, yucky? That's fine. Just pop them straight in and that way you are adding some extra flavour into your stock paste and it's really cost you nothing at all. So far, the ingredients have really not cost much at all. A carrot, an onion, a tomato, a zucchini um, and a little bit of celery or the stalks of something that you don't want to throw away. Celery leaves are also good. So if you buy a whole celery, just chop off, cut off the leaves, put them in a Ziploc bag, pop them in the freezer and you can use that in the recipe. Waste not, want, want not. All right, so I'm just going to skip through all of that because that's asking us for each of the herbs. So this is what my bowl looks like now. You can see that it's just sitting at the right level. There's my maximum here, okay? So we don't want to get much more than that in our bowl. Next instruction, lid on, measuring cup in. And we've got 10 seconds on the clock, around to speed six. Lovely. I want to show you what the inside of the bowl looks like because then we can make a decision about whether we need to do that chopping again. So can you see how there are still quite a few larger pieces? I can see pieces of carrot and onion that are still quite large. So I'm going to give it a quick scrape down and we are going to repeat that step. So never be afraid to repeat a step if you think by looking at it that it probably needs just a little bit more. Trust your instincts. And to go backwards, there is a left hand arrow at the top left hand of the screen. So just go backwards, another 10 seconds, speed six. Wonderful. So now I'm going to show you what it should look like. And if you need to do, you probably only need to do it once. Lovely. That's much better. So you can see now it's quite, um, it's all munched up. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. I'll show it, show it to you on the spoon so you can see that you want lots of very small bits. That is the result that we're after. Okay. Next, scrape down the bowl, which I've just done. And now we're going to add 150 of rock salt. So in that goes a little bit of a discussion about rock salt. Please don't skimp on this step. The, the salt is designed for the, um, to save it over a long period of time. So it's your preservative. And when you think about it, when you are using the rock salt, uh, when you're using the um, stock, you're only going to be using a teaspoon to a tablespoon in a whole bowl of cooking. So it becomes very diluted. So please don't get too worked up about the salt content. It is stock after all. Okay, a tablespoon of olive oil. I'm, again, I don't bother getting out the measurer. I just put in what looks like a tablespoon. But of course, you can measure if you want. And the instruction now is to put the steaming basket on top instead of the measuring cup. And press next. And that's going to cook for 20 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this off of here. And I'm just going to let it cook in the machine behind me. 
Now, this is one that I've just done just before I came onto the live, and that has cooked down over the 20 minutes. So this is what it should look like after 20 minutes of cooking down. All right, so I'm gonna skip the step on here. And this next instruction is so, is so that we can um, blend up this very hot liquid. Remember that this is cooked and it will be sitting at around 100 degrees. So it will be quite very, very hot. It's extremely important to, as per the screen, to put your measuring cup in. So we will have removed the basket that's on top and we replace it with the measuring cup. And the lid is on. And now we're going to blend this for one minute. There's very precise instructions which you must follow down the bottom. The first instruction says to turn the speed to speed five, which you do. And you can see when it reaches speed five because the counter will start counting down. And now what we need you to do is to increase it slowly so that it eventually ends up at speed nine. So that's speed six, speed seven, eight, and nine. It's very, very important that we really re that we remember how hot that contents is, and that we have put it up to speed nine. What will happen now is I'm going to lift off this lid and ensure that I I press down on here so that the steam steams away from me. Okay, so that is very important that the steam is escaping and it's not coming into your face. And then we will turn over the lid. And as you can see, there is a lot of contents on that lid, which I'm gonna use my spatula and pop straight back down into the bowl. Because we want to save all that we can from this. Now, once we have made our stock paste, you must ensure that whatever container that you put it in, it should be a sterilized jar. So just pre-sterilize your jars before you start the cooking process. I make sure that they're washed thoroughly in warm soapy water, rinse them out, and then I boil a kettle and pour it into the, into the jar and leave it for the 20 minutes while it's cooking is long enough and that will sterilize the jar. The other thing that I find makes life very easy is one of these, the jam funnels, which many people would have seen if they have um, been watching my, my videos. Best item ever. You can get it from the mix shop here in Australia. I'm sure that there are other places that you can buy them as well. And I use it for lots of purposes, but for this, it's extremely useful. All right, I'm just going to lift this out and because I have the glider board underneath, I can just push that away from me without dragging it so that it's uh, not damaging the scales. I just wanna show you how to properly pick up this bowl so that it's best for your arms and your shoulders because it's very heavy and it's hot. So once you have scraped down the side of the bowl, like so, instead of grabbing this top part of your handle, try grabbing the bottom half, like so. What happens is you naturally tuck in your arm and then when you pour, it's much better for 
I have a bit of a dodgy shoulder, so it's much better on my shoulder and also on my elbow. And in it goes, like so. Fantastic. Ah, uh, hot jar. So that is a beautiful jar of vegetable stock paste. I've got a little bit left, so I'm going to put that into a container and I'll probably just... That will be what I'll use first, so one moment. Right, just a little bit of an extra. I still use my jam funnel, even if I'm putting it into just a container. So this will be the stock paste that I'll use first because it's not going into a sterilized jar. Your sterilized jar will last for six to nine months in the fridge. I have never ever had a problem with having the stock paste in the fridge for a long time. Just make sure, sterilized jar to begin with, and each time you take some stock paste out of your jar, please use a clean spoon every time. It's a pretty, um, pretty basic thing, but it works. Okay, so now we're left with a bowl. I've got now as much as I feel that I can, but I also don't want to waste what's left in there. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring back my machine. There we go, so you can see it. And I am going to put about a litre of water into this bowl. Let me go get my jug. Right, so just from the kettle, I'm just going to pour in between 500 and a litre is fine. That's just short of the litre. I'm going to put back my lid. So my lid has got lots of bits and pieces on it as well, but it's all something that we can, we can keep. And I'm going to save that little bit there, pop this back on. Finish that recipe, and if you've got a TM6, or even if you've got a TM5, find your turbo button. So on a TM6, I just scroll like so, and I hit turbo. Now the important thing with turbo is that as soon as it's activated, your handles on the side are going to lock your lid into place immediately. Now on the screen, you'll have three choices of three times. It's half a second, one second or two seconds. You choose whichever one you want to use. I'm going to just do one second and then activate the turbo button and just turn. So you can use turbo constantly. You can just keep repeating it one second at a time until whatever it is that you're chopping or mixing is done to your satisfaction. It will not unlock until you press the home key. Once you press the home key, the arms will unlock and now you can get the lid off. So if you've ever put it into turbo and wondered why it doesn't automatically unlock, it's because you must put in, must press the home key. All right, so that is now all of that beautiful stock that was sitting around the bowl and on the blades has all been mixed together and I'm just going to save that, put it into a jug and I can use it with my next recipe in place of the stock paste and the water content of the recipe. So if you're doing a mushroom risotto for instance, you need about 720 grams, I will just use this. I won't have to add any more stock paste. And it means that you have not wasted one single thing of your stock paste. So that's it for me. So please go ahead make some vegetable stock paste and if you've already made that then try doing some chicken stock paste or even the meat stock paste because it does add another level of taste and flavor again especially when you're doing chicken recipes um, or if you're doing meat recipes it just makes such a difference i think that's it for now thanks for joining me and i shall see you another time